A man is arrested and charged with murder several weeks after the crime was committed. And now police say he was actually at the crime scene while police were investigating. An organization that helps troubled children now facing a mountain of trouble of its own from last week's winter weather. This noon, our Stephen Cavazos details the damage left behind. Live from Case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. New at noon, one man is accused of shooting another man who confronted him as he was breaking into cars here in San Antonio. That's according to police who say that they have made an arrest for a murder that happened back in December. 50-year-old Oscar <laughs> Martinez was arrested and charged with the crime. Police say on December 19th, they were called to the 15,800 block of Chase Hill Boulevard after a shooting was reported in the area. At the time, the victim was able to tell police that he saw someone breaking into cars, so he confronted the man, and that's when he was shot. The victim later died due to complications from that gunshot. Police identified the suspect after reviewing officers' dash cam footage recorded at the scene. Officers say the video captured Martinez getting rid of a brown bag, which police say had a gun inside of it. San Antonio police have more than just a few questions about the shooting death of a 17 year old boy. They say someone dropped off the wounded teen at a downtown hospital, then took off. Katrina Weber reports the investigation later led police to a south side neighborhood. The mystery for police began downtown around 1030 last night. They say someone left a 17 year old now identified as Dominic Thatcher at Children's Hospital of San Antonio, then left altogether. He had a fatal gunshot wound in his head. A phone call moments later, though, would help solve part of the mystery, bringing police to the 3000 block of South Flores. In the middle of the street, investigators found shell casings and other evidence confirming this is where Thatcher was shot. A neighbor helped us piece together what happened. I spoke with a man off camera who says he witnessed the car come down the street with its lights off. He says a passenger then pointed a gun out the window and fired toward that empty lot. The man says a short time later he saw a woman get out of that same car with blood on her clothing and screaming for help. And he told me he believes the teen may have shot himself. Police now confirmed Thatcher was in that car when he somehow was shot. They're still trying to sort out all of the details, and they say so far they have not made any arrests. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. And happening right now, key committees in both chambers of the Texas legislature are meeting to discuss what went wrong with the state's power infrastructure during last week's winter storm. In the House, the State Affairs Committee and the Business and Commerce Committee will hear invited testimony on what led to the blackouts, how they were handled, and how to avoid future power interruptions. In the Senate, the Finance Committee and the Business and Commerce Committee will meet to examine extreme weather preparedness. We have live streams of the meetings on our website, KSED.com, and we'll have more about these discussions tonight on the news at 5 and again at 6. Meantime, last week's devastating winter storm has snowballed into a lot of problems for a lot of local nonprofits, in particular, Roy Moss Youth Alternatives. It's been helping to change the lives of at-risk foster children for almost 30 years. However, as Stephen Cavasso shows us, it was hit hard by the winter storm, and it is still suffering effects. Roy Moss Youth Alternatives gives troubled kids a chance to start over. The nonprofit provides a number of resources like counseling, shelter, and nutritional meals. The Burdick Community Center is where more than 300 meals are prepared daily. But even this safe haven wasn't spared from the winter wrath. For us, this is huge because now we really have to come up with a secondary plan. Joseph Rudolph is a senior director of facility and food services at the nonprofit. He tells us three classrooms flooded after the fire sprinkler system pipes bursted. The center was where the damage was most impactful, but especially in the kitchen where those hundreds of meals are made. Rudolph says the building has been open since 2012, but no one ever anticipated destruction like this. Although the storm only lasted a few days, you can see the damage was long lasting and not just that, Possibly thousands of dollars in food had to be discarded, leaving the nonprofit with a mountain of problems. Rudolph says that they are still able to meet the demand of 300 meals a day, but it's not easy. Those meals are currently being made in cabins where it's a lot smaller and the process much slower. They don't have a lot of storage in there either, so it makes it a little bit more difficult for them. 
but he credits the hardworking staff for keeping the morale high. Although Rudolph says the loss was great, they haven't lost hope and will continue to advocate for their kids, who he says will always be a top priority. We always work to make sure we meet the needs of our kids. Stephen Cavasso's KSAT 12 News. People in several communities still don't have basic necessities nearly two weeks after the severe winter weather. President Biden announcing major disaster declarations for several states as people try to pick up the pieces. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest for us. It's still dirty. One of the most basic human needs has become one of the biggest issues in Texas. In Houston, this woman says she's been boiling water since last Monday, and this muddy mess has been coming out of her faucet. I just need the city to come out here and really do what we should do for us. Seniors, and not even only seniors, everybody that pays tax. Officials say the change is caused by algae that is seasonal and the drinking water continues to meet or exceed all federal and state standards. Meantime, more than one million in the region don't have water at all. You have to go over there to fill up water, otherwise you can't even flush the toilet. Power also still out for thousands. Texas Governor Greg Abbott addressing the state Wednesday night, promising a full investigation into ERCOT, the agency that manages 90 percent of the state's power grid. ERCOT must be overhauled. Many of you are angry. And you have a right to be. Six members of the ERCOT board have resigned in the wake of the crisis. And Mississippi's governor now dispatching the National Guard to the capital of Jackson, where the deep freeze crippled water pipes for 160,000 people. Officials hoping to restore service by Friday. And President Biden has issued a major disaster declaration for Texas and also hard hit Oklahoma. That increases federal funding for recovery for things like home repair, temporary housing and low cost loans for uninsured property losses. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Now to the other disaster, Save Our Seniors. That's the focus of a new statewide program announced by Governor Greg Abbott this morning. The goal is to get the coronavirus vaccine to more senior citizens. The governor was in Corpus Christi this morning there to commend the city in their efforts to get the seniors vaccinated. Governor Abbott says the statewide efforts begin next week with the help of the National Guard. The National Guard will then be collaborating with local communities and nonprofits like Meals on Wheels. Abbott says the goal is to have 50 percent of Texas seniors vaccinated by the end of next week. Save Our Seniors efforts have already been underway in San Antonio to help homebound seniors get the COVID-19 vaccine. Our mission is very simple, and that is to get our seniors vaccinated as quickly as possible. As of yesterday, about 40 percent of all seniors identified as those who are age 65 and older have, been, have received at least one vaccine in the state of Texas. Our goal is by the end of next week to have that number up to 50 percent of seniors having a vaccination and to have all of our seniors vaccinated by the end of March. And that is all seniors who choose to have a vaccine. The governor says Texas is set to receive well over one million vaccine dosages this week. Back here in Bear County, more cases of coronavirus, though. 371 more people were diagnosed and nine more have died after contracting the virus. And there was another drop in the number of people with COVID-19 in our local hospitals, though. 499 COVID-19 patients are hospitalized. 190 are in the intensive care unit and 115 are on ventilators. Hey, the Spurs are back on the road, back on the court, but not back to full strength. Highlights coming up from their trip to OKC in sports. The Botanical Gardens, they're looking for some green thumbs. They are working hard after last week's cold weather. How you can help out after the break. The pickup and restoration process continuing across many parts of San Antonio after last week's freezing temperatures. And the San Antonio Botanical Gardens also affected their plants, flowers, even trees suffering due to the cold. Alicia Barrera visited the garden to learn more about what lengths employees have gone to make sure there's life once again in those blooms.
Just two weeks ago, life was in full bloom across the colorful 30 plus acres of the San Antonio Botanical Garden. Everybody said it was coming, it was coming. Now we didn't realize how it was going to impact us until it actually hit. Lush landscapes turned white freezing what was underneath. But uh, some of the cactuses, uh, the more of the agaves, the more succulent plants, they took a hard hit. We've never lost agaves and we've not lost prickly pear. This is the first year that that's happened. But experts like Scott Litschke, Associate Director of Grounds and Conservatory with the San Antonio Botanical Garden. Yeah, this is my 29th year here. Uh, I've seen a lot of freezes, but no, nothing to this extent. Did everything they could to save the plant life that brings joy and peace to visitors throughout the year. Our greenhouses, our conservatories all have to keep at an optimum temperature for some of these plants. So some of us actually had to spend the night here to make sure we didn't have any power outages. And as the snow finally began to melt, they discovered busted water pipes and growth of plants, trees and flowers now limp and even distorted. That's mushy and that's that needs to be cut to the ground. But he says if you look a little closer, you'll notice there's still hope and life. If you would just do a slight scrape with your clipper or knife, you're going to see that green there. That is a perfect plant there. Even popular ornamental grass still stands a second chance. So you want to cut them back to shape so they end up being just a round ball with a flat top on the top. By the spring, things will once again bloom, but working hands and green thumbs are needed more than ever. We sure could use some hands here to help us clean up all the things we're we'll be cutting back. Uh, we're going to be mulching again. Uh, getting ready for the springtime. Uh, becoming a member is very helpful. Uh, your membership fees go to the garden and that's that'll help us a lot. Those interested must first submit an application online before signing up for volunteer opportunities. Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Don't have to worry about that cold right now. So you have goodness. to worry about wet. Look at that. Rain on the camera. Well, I'm hoping it's a lot of rain because we actually could still use it. That is true. But what's really interesting about the forecast as we go through the next several days, you're going to see a chance of rain in the forecast each day. But unfortunately, it's probably not going to add up to much. Uh, some places could see maybe a half inch of rain through the weekend. So even though we've got daily rain chances, it's not going to be a, a deluge each day. Certainly not a washout. Uh, and we'll talk about the forecast coming up here very shortly. The aquifer is up nearly one foot in the past 24 hours. Hours. And in your pollen count, mold and mountain cedar both low today. We'll have to watch that mold number with today's humidity and moisture out there. A look at radar and the forecast coming up. This Rodeo Remembers is sponsored by the Chevy Silverado. San Antonio, when you think of the rodeo, you think of the Freeman Coliseum, and both would not exist without the vision and drive of Joe and Harold Freeman. The brothers grew up working the family general store, and they were hard workers. By the 1940s, they had grown their family business to include Chevy dealerships, cotton, real estate, and ranching. Around this time, the city and the Freemans realized San Antonio needed a new venue to host big events. They quickly became key players in its construction, and and the Bear County Coliseum opened to the public in 1949. One reason the brothers had taken such an interest was their own dream of creating a premier livestock expo for the youth of Texas, and that's exactly what they did. On February 17, 1950, San Antonio held its first annual stock show and rodeo. Through the years, the rodeo has raised over $200 million for Texas youth involved in agriculture. After Joe's death in 1971, the Bear County Coliseum's name changed to the Joe Freeman Coliseum. Then in 1970, 1985, it changed again, and Harry's name was added. So when you're enjoying the rodeo this year, remember, thank the Freeman Brothers. Oh, we love good news. Yeah. My wife just texted me and said that our neighborhood boil water notice has been rescinded. Yes. So that's good news. So if you live in Comal County or Blanco County and you are on the Canyon Lake water system, you might want to get on the website or check your email because they've been emailing us pretty regularly. Let us know updates and stuff. So or get on their website and check and see what uh, what status your neighborhood is. Good but, news. Uh, so many people still fine. looking for plumbing yeah. parts and <laughs> got a feel for them. Here we are in, you know, 
56 yeah. degree weather and uh, we're still suffering the effects from last week. Uh, I, I, yeah, unfortunately, I think it's going to continue to linger even as the weather changes. We've had some warm days this week. Obviously, it's a bit cooler out there today. We're in the 50s and I don't see our temperature budging very much even as we head into mid afternoon. Uh, look at radar. If you've been outside, even if you've just kind of taken a little glance outside, it looks pretty damp out there. Our roadways are fairly wet. Uh, but radar is not very busy. In fact, you have to zoom in fairly closely to see any radar returns and that green color that's showing up uh, indicates very, very light precipitation. Nonetheless, it's again just kind of damp and messy out there and we do have some moisture on our camera lens. The airport itself, the sensor there is reading some light rain. So even though there's not a whole lot showing up on radar, uh, it's Again, kind of messy out there, just damp um, and not the bright sunshine that we've had so far this week. We've also got some patchy fog in and around San Antonio Bear County up I-35 to New Braunfels, generally along the Highway 90 corridor off to the west. Also two and a half mile visibility in Gonzales, so nothing too dense, but with some low clouds, moisture, a little bit of mist and drizzle. Uh, visibility is a little limited in places this afternoon. Look at our temperatures, big spread here, and this is kind of a hint that something is going on. We've got 50s here in San Antonio and then points north, 68 Carrizo Springs, 74 Catula, and look at Laredo, 82. We've actually got a frontal boundary that's south of San Antonio and Highway 90 that has really kind of pumped the brakes. This started to move through very slowly yesterday evening and last night and really the best way to kind of find it is by looking at the dew points. We've got uh, lower dew points off to the north of uh, that boundary, higher dew points down to the south. So it's likely here uh, between Pleasanton, Beeville and Catula there and it's kind of just going to hang out there even as we head into the afternoon. I don't expect much more movement with that frontal boundary and that's going to wreak havoc on our temperatures this afternoon. Big spread and forecast high temperatures for today. A look at satellite and radar some clearing well down to the south. Meanwhile, most of us are stuck under a lot of cloud cover and also as you saw a little bit of very, very light rain. This cloud cover and light radar returns extend uh, up into far north Texas. What we've got going on is the return of humidity moisture at the surface, but we've also got an upper level low sitting over the four corners that's going to drop down, swing across North Texas tonight. As that happens, there's going to be a lot more rain, even some thunderstorm activity up in central and North Texas, but this will also produce some light scattered showers for us here at home late today into the overnight hours. That energy will exit off to the east tomorrow afternoon. We may even see few peaks of sun Friday afternoon, but even as we head into the weekend, no big weather makers moving in, but our weather pattern is just going to remain a little unsettled Saturday into Sunday and into early next week. So that's going to keep chances of rain in the forecast each day, but it's not going to be big swaths of rain. Each day is not going to be a washout, but there could be some activity on radar each day as we head into the weekend and early next week. So future cast, Picking up on some of that light rain around today, I think as we head into the afternoon, very similar to what we're seeing now, that very light rain mist, a little bit of drizzle possible. It won't be until tonight into the overnight hours that we start to see some slightly heavier shower activity pick up. That'll be scattered tonight through early Friday morning. So if you'll be out on the roads early tomorrow morning, certainly could be slick and a little messy out there as far as the rain is concerned by tomorrow afternoon. This time tomorrow we should start to see that shower activity really winding down. And again, as I mentioned, maybe even a few peaks of sun to wrap up the day on Friday. But as for today, staying pretty gross out there. Temperatures hovering in the upper 50s, low 60s, light rain and mist until this evening. And then that's when we have a better chance of some showers. Temperatures are going to vary. If you're well to the south, places like Catula, you will be warmer this afternoon because you're out ahead of that stalled frontal boundary. So nice to see the rain. Some lucky folks could see maybe close to a half inch of rain. We'll talk about those potential rainfall totals next half hour. Guys, half an inch would be great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. By the way, I just checked the website. All Canyon Lake water subdivisions now have potable water can be consumed without boiling. Yay. There's mm. that. There is that. And then there's there's this. The uh -oh. Spurs. Oh, don't, don't look. Not oh, so good. That hurt. we got highlights of the Spurs and OKC coming up. And the Spurs scheduled for the second half of the season. Uh, brutal.
Brewers putting an unusual starting lineup on the floor last night. G League call up Luka Simonich getting the start since the Spurs were shorthanded due to COVID-19 protocols. Wrapping up the rodeo road trip in OKC. Luka going to work early. Getting in for the lane for the layup. Spurs lead. Final minutes of the first quarter. Spurs down eight. So Patty Mills drains the 21-footer. And then LaMarcus Aldridge off the bench for the first time since 07. Missing six games. Knocked down the three. Spurs down six going into the second. That's where they catch fire. Aldridge another three. 8-0 run. They're not done. DeJounte Murray with a steal and takes it back. 16-2 run. Spurs up seven. Spurs lead 45-40 at the break. All right, Spurs get another 8-2 run going in the third. That puts them up 11. Murray hits the jumper. Spurs up 53-42. But then the Thunder start to roll and cut the lead down to one when Aldridge goes baseline for the two-handed slam. Seconds left. Shea Gillius Alexander goes the length of the court, gets the finger roll. Thunder by three going into the fourth. Under a minute and a half to go. Mills driving baseline, gets the hoop, then spins back to get free for the bucket. Spurs down two, 30 seconds left. Lonnie Walker attacking the rim. And it's tied at 99. And then the last shot with 3.9 seconds. Uh, Al Horford finds that wide open Lou Dort for the three at the buzzer. Spurs drop a heartbreaker, 102 to 99. We fought hard. We lost the game by two points, three points uh, at a buzzer. So ain't no excuses. Everybody get paid to do a job, and that's to be a professional and be ready to go. All right, so next up for the Spurs, they take on the New Orleans Pelicans here at home. That'll be Saturday night at 7 o'clock at the AT&T Center. Hey, the NBA released its second season schedule, and it's going to be a rough one for the Spurs since they are going to have to play their five games that were postponed, including four on this rodeo road trip due to positive coronavirus tests. As a result, the Spurs will play 40 games in 68 nights, seven sets of back-to-backs. -back. That includes two five-game road trips, 23 road games. But the Spurs have a much better record, though, so they may not be all that bad. So here's a look at the rescheduled games for the Spurs. they got to make up that game against Detroit, at Cleveland, at Indiana, at New Orleans, and at New York. So ooh, it's going to be a fun second half of the season. Should we call it the coronavirus road trip? You could call it that, yeah. yeah. All right. Definitely. New today at 5. Did your plant survive last week's record call? Mine did not. Some are going to be looking a little brown and lifeless, but some of them are not a total loss. Some landscaping tips today at 5 after Entertainment Tonight. In prepared testimony ahead of her appearance today before the House Appropriations Committee, the acting U.S. Capitol Police Chief defended the actions of her officers during the riot at the Capitol last month. Yogananda Pittman admitting the department was overwhelmed when thousands of insurrectionists made their way inside the Capitol. She said there were some internal challenges during the assault on the Capitol as it was underway. She says intelligence collected ahead of the riot prompted the agency to take some extraordinary measures, including the special arming of officers and intercepting radio frequencies that were being used by the invaders. The Labor Department says another 730,000 Americans filed for first-time unemployment benefits last week. That's adjusted with seasonal swings added to those contract workers. For the first time, claims total about 1.2 million. Still, it was fewer than economists predicted. Most of the sharp drops came from California and Ohio. There was also a decline here in Texas, where extreme winter weather led to mass power and water outages. Many of us still struggling with that. Uh, and now we got a little bit of rain to deal with as well. Yes, and this kicks off a several day stretch where you will see rain chances in the forecast. Um, this is not going to be, I don't think, a drought busting scenario as we head into the weekend and early next week. But we are transitioning away from the bright sunny days that we saw earlier in the week and getting into uh, days that may look a little bit more like this. So we've got some uh, raindrops there on our camera lens, some light rain and mist being reported at the airport. This has started to pick up in coverage a bit, especially around Bear County over the past couple of hours. 
as we've started to see some fog develop all the way from New Braunfels down 35 into San Antonio and off to the west through Castroville and Hondo. But you'll notice up in Kerrville in the Hill Country, visibility is just fine there. I do want to take one more look at radar. If you were to, to open your phone or the KSAT weather app and look at radar, you're not going to see much. We have to zoom in and get really close to start to see some of these light returns. So there is just very, very light rain out there this afternoon. But as you saw from the view of live cam, we've got obstructed visibility. So even though this rain is very light, it's going to stay pretty messy out there today. Temperature wise, 55 Canyon Lake, 57 Bandera. So temperatures are fairly uniform in and around San Antonio and the Metro. But when you zoom out, things do change. Most of us in the 50s and 60s, but as you go much farther south, 76 Beeville, 74 Catula, already 82 in Laredo. So depending on where you live this afternoon, your temperatures will vary. I expect we'll stay in the upper 50s, low 60s here in San Antonio, but keep in mind if you're farther south, Carrizo Springs, Catula, you'll be in the 70s this afternoon. Uh, and even the upper 70s there in Beeville. So a spread in temperatures today. Uh, we will talk more about our upcoming rain chances, including a uh, chance of some spotty rain this weekend and some scattered storms Monday coming up in just a bit. Guys. Thank you, Katie. 2020, it was tough on most of us. And so far, 2021 hasn't been an easy year either. So no surprise that some people are turning to therapy, maybe for the first time ever in their lives, how online options are giving people more access to the resources they need. And a Texas bakery is stepping up to help fellow Texans in need. How two businesswomen in Austin are doing their part to make sure their neighbors don't go hungry. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather, streaming free on KSAT TV. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar. The price of Bitcoin falling slightly now to $49,000 this morning. That after a rally on Wednesday, the crypto got another boost after payments company Square. They announced that they purchased an additional $170 million worth of Bitcoin in the recent quarter. Meanwhile, DoorDash expected to release their very first earnings report as a publicly traded company after the bell today. The food delivery company had a stellar debut when they hit the public markets back in December. Analysts expecting the food delivery company to report strong results as the delivery boom continues. And Airbnb also going to unveil their first earnings report as a publicly traded company after the bell as well today. The short-term rental company had a successful public debut back in December with the stock more than doubling on its very first day of trading. Since then, the company's stock has steadily risen. Analysts expecting Airbnb to see a revenue boost of $747 million for the quarter and will be focused on the outlook for the travel industry. And that's your Cheddar Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. Over the last year, life has changed so, for so many of us in unimaginable ways. The stress of it all has taken its toll on many. However, as ABC's Rita Roy tells us, many who are struggling with their mental health are now finding help is right at their fingertips. Coronavirus lockdowns, social distancing, loss of loved ones, unemployment, and financial struggles. It's no secret this past year has been hard in some way for many people. 30-year-old Karishma Thomas opening up to us about her struggle. I had lost my job. I was very confused. I was just kind of going through the motions of day-to-day -day life. According to recent data, more than half of American adults feel that worry or stress related to COVID-19 has had a negative impact on their mental health. There's actually a mental health emergency in the United States. Suicides have spiked, overdose deaths have spiked. The need for self-care is also on the rise. I just kind of thought, okay, I need to start taking care of myself. And Thomas decided to try therapy you know, for the first time diet. ever. Growing up, it wasn't something that was really in our family or in our culture. But in the middle of this pandemic, her sessions have been on FaceTime, making it less intimidating. I really enjoy it because it gives you... Um, flexibility and I'm like comfortable in my home. It really just feels like I'm having a conversation with a friend. And millions are finding similar help online and on their phones. We immediately saw a surge 
in downloads, people were suddenly realizing that they needed to look after their mental health and well-being in an urgent way. Headspace offers guided meditations to reduce stress and anxiety or improve sleep. And teletherapy apps like Talkspace connect people with certified therapists by video and even text messaging. People are writing when something might be happening in the moment. They don't have to wait. So it fits into their lifestyle in a really seamless way. And there are plenty of options right at your fingertips with a range of resources for things like journaling, goal setting, mindfulness and movement. Experts say these digital platforms help make the world of well-being more accessible. A revolutionary time for mental health in an era when so many people have seen theirs decline. It's something that's as important as taking a shower or going to the gym. We need to be actively taking care of our mental health. I've just felt such a difference. I think my friends and family have seen a difference. And so I think it was just one of the best decisions I ever made. Now, because there is such a wide range of choices, experts recommend doing your research, saying not all apps are created equal. And it is important to spend time figuring out the best fit for you. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Live look outside. Wow. <laughs> it's looking pretty murky out there, um, drizzling over much of our viewing area. Yes, and I expect that will continue into the afternoon. By late this evening, we could start to see a few more heavier showers, and that'll continue overnight. But for the rest of the afternoon, it's going to stay uh, just pretty murky and gross out there. Uh, the aquifer is up nearly a foot in the past 24 hours, and in your pollen count, mold and mountain cedar are low. But with all that moisture out there today, mold could maybe drop up a bit tomorrow. More on your forecast coming up. Have we got deals for you? Welcome to KSATDeals.com. This item is already one of our most popular, a new one-year Sam's Club membership. This yearly membership is typically $45, but not today. It's only $28.88, and you get this for free, the Sam's Club Seasoned Rotisserie Chicken and the eight-count gourmet cupcakes. Now, there are some important details and steps that you'll need to follow. After your KSAT Deals purchase, you'll get a confirmation email to redeem your purchase. Use the link to finalize your membership enter your information and activate your membership watch for your confirmation email and once you've done this you can pick up your membership card at the nearest sam's club now be sure to read the email confirmation and sign up now to start saving lots of money the case at deals price on this 28.88 head over to caseatdeals.com for this one and many more Take a look at this. The Perseverance rover is sending Instagram worthy HD photos back from Mars. The rover has been transmitted, has transmitted the 142 images it took showing where it landed a week ago using a pair of zoomable color cameras. Those cameras sit on a mast to make them equivalent to eye level for six and a half foot tall person. If you're looking at a stitch job, NASA did put some of those photos together to create 360 degree panorama. The Perseverance rover will spend two years roaming a crater uh, where there are searching for signs of ancient life. So we know there's like some red dust on Mars and there's like some wind because we heard that the other day, right? Mm-hmm. We're so. going to learn a like lot. Like Lubbock. Yeah. <laughs> West Texas. Black I do West. love Lubbock. Exactly. Love those windstorms there there. Yeah, that's so cool. I mean, just we've got a, a rover up there with HD cameras taking pictures on Mars for two years. Mind blowing. Yeah, Mind blowing. Love to see those pictures. Keep them coming. Uh, not such a pretty picture here at home. We've got uh, some moisture out there today and this kicks off again a several stretch of daily rain chances. So when you see this, um, I, I don't want you to be set on you getting rain each day because chances are that won't happen. Uh, but we've got just an unsettled weather pattern. And I was as I was trying to think about how to describe this, it's almost like um, like a, a kid that's not able to sit still in their chair. They're not, you know, making big thrashing movements to where we're going to see, you know, big, you know, big swaths of widespread rain, but they're just not able to kind of sit still. So we're going to have these little impulses moving through and that will result in generally, especially for the next few days, some lower end rain chances, a better chance of some scattered storms as we get into Monday. So that'll be our highest coverage, but look all the way through Monday. So for the next several days, rainfall potential at the most for our area, this kind of dark tealish color is about a half inch approaching an inch, especially as you go a bit farther north. But again, that's going to be spread out over several days all the way through the weekend. 
and Monday of next week. And again, this is the result of just a slightly unsettled weather pattern. We've got these little dips in the jet stream that will pass by, uh, bringing more energy to North Texas. One moves through tonight. Uh, as we get into the weekend, we'll continue to see some kind of weak disturbances moving in and then a slightly stronger disturbance passing by again late Sunday as we get into Monday. Looks like that will be our best opportunity to see the most coverage of rain. Until then, uh, just kind of hit or miss spotty rain for the next few days. For the rest of your Thursday, light rain and mist hanging around into the afternoon. It'll be late this evening, approaching midnight, that we'll start to see some more scattered showers pop up, some heavier rain that would be easier to see on radar because honestly, if you pull up radar right now, there's really not much to see because this precipitation is just so light. And again, it's just resulting in these little drops uh, on our lens there. Uh, travel is okay though, so the rain is not so heavy that it's really impacting travel, but it does look like our roadways are starting to get uh, a little damp. We also have reduced visibility in places one and a half mile visibility up in New Braunfels, three miles here in San Antonio, two and a half miles in Gonzales. So this fog is not dense, but it could limit visibility in places and anywhere you have fog, there could be mist, so some of that very, very light precipitation. Temperatures big spread here, 82 in Laredo, 53 in Fredericksburg. So we've got a frontal boundary that is stalled out about south of Highway 90. So we've got some slightly drier air behind it, but it's still very, very muggy uh, to the south of this frontal boundary. Uh, really, that front is going to hang out there, so that'll result in big spreads in our afternoon high temperatures today, but it'll also keep a chance for some of this uh, light, very light rain activity around. But again, as we head into late Thursday into the overnight hours, that's where we'll start to see some slightly heavier showers moving through. There will be a scattering of the shower activity tonight through very early tomorrow morning. Rainiest part of the day should be first part of the day, Friday, Friday morning, and then by Friday afternoon, rain really moving east, and we could even see some peaks of sun uh, tomorrow. So a look at your Friday forecast. Spotty showers in the morning with temperatures in the 40s, up to near 58 in the afternoon tomorrow with a little clearing. So still, uh, or 60, I should say. So still staying pretty cool tomorrow. We'll get a little bit warmer this weekend with highs back in the 70s. Again, it looks like our highest coverage of rain will be Monday, and we'll be right back. The snow and ice has melted and the power is back on here in Texas, but food supplies in some areas aren't back up to pre-storm levels. And that's why the owners of Cream Bakery in Austin decided to help. Once they could get supplies in, owners Jessica Tomberlin and her wife Janessa used $5,000 of their own money to buy food for people who need it. They estimate 400 people have picked up things like eggs, produce, chicken breasts, and hot soup from them. Jessica Tomberlin says some people in the area have been hit harder than others. Grocery stores have been out of all of the staples. Lines are really long. and We've got a lot of families, a lot of um, elderly people in our community who just needed a way to be able to get food. Yeah, the Tomberlins are hoping to feed a thousand people by the end of the week. They're relying on crowdfunding to get enough money to make that happen. Meantime, a kindergarten teacher is getting popular on TikTok after sharing clips of what it's like to teach kids from afar. Mackenzie Adams is teaching her students remotely in Lake Stevens, Washington. Miss Adams, in her third year of teaching, does her best to help her students avoid screen fatigue and so has an animated way of teaching her kindergartners. Still, she says it's hard to keep them engaged all the time. This one uh, student raises his hand and I go, okay, show me your paper. And instead he just completely rolls up his sleeve and he has a nice um, artwork picture on his arm <laughs> in like black marker. 
I hope he wasn't using a Sharpie. Oh. Mom wouldn't <laughs> like that. Adam says the secret to her high energy teaching style, she gets a lot of sleep and drinks a lot of coffee. Can you imagine some of the stuff the teachers are seeing during these Zoom episodes? Mm. Do what you gotta do. Speaking of seeing a bunch of fun stuff, Mike and Fiona are always showing us fun stuff. Oh, yeah, fun and food. And of course, that's all on today's show. It is National Chili Day. Now, Mike, I mean, we love chili, right? Especially on a day like this. Oh, it's perfect. And, you know, a nice warm bowl of chili. And it all depends on what you like. Do you like sour cream on your chili? I know a lot of people yes. kind of go, what? Sour cream? I do. Oh, Pile it on. cheese, sour cream, a little bit of diced onion. Just throw it all in there. And, ooh, nice bowl of of love. Right, and we have a chef, Brian West here, who's going to be making a bowl of chili today, but you are going to be breaking some chili myths, right, Tafa? Absolutely, yeah, there's a few of them out there. What's one of them? Well, uh, you know, that it's 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 designed to uh, uh, to, to have beans all the time. Doesn't mm -hmm. always have to have beans. That's, that's the big debate, right? Yeah, it's beans, a huge no debate beans. on that one. So <laughs> yeah, for sure. Okay, so we're going to be talking more chili myths coming up, as well as that recipe. But we also chat with award-winning country singer Trace Atkins about his upcoming virtual concert. And we are going to take you, if you went to a staycation, a lot of folks are going to be doing that this year for spring break, about 30 minutes north of San Antonio. Look at this, how gorgeous it is. It's tri Texas tripping, and Jen is going to take you up there. I'm going to go right now, just looking at that video. And connecting with people, well, that can be a little tough during a pandemic, but you can send love and food to someone you care about in the form of a heart-shaped pizza. We're going to tell you how you can do that. And so much more when SA Live continues in just a few minutes. Pizza chili, what do I eat?